Praise the Lord. A couple of announcements. Pastor Karen Willis will be here next week uh, to fill the pulpit and serve communion. Uh, Pastor Darwin Goshorn is available for any emergencies, but please call one of your elders first. <clears throat> Excuse me. June 9th, the 175th anniversary of Fansburg Reformed Church, and uh, I will be speaking, and the angels will be singing, and 16th is Father's Day, so. <clears throat> One other announcement. Uh, Art Woods uh, has is doing very well. I saw him yesterday. He's doing very well. Um, they're working him out real well. He is anticipating a prosthesis for the uh, limb that <clears throat> was removed. And uh, I found out yesterday that Art's birthday was yesterday. And he was 83. I would love to see us shower him with some with some uh, cards this week, even though it's after his birthday, to let him know that we're thinking about him. <clears throat> and rather than just send one card, I'd just like to see him just get bombarded. And I have his address, and if you have your pencil available, and everybody look at your ladies, because they're the ones that are carrying those pens. Are you ready? It's Penn State Rehab Hospital. <clears throat> and that's 1135 Old West Chocolate. Old West Chocolate. 1135 Old West Chocolate. And that's an avenue. And that's Hershey. 17036. 17036. <clears throat> and his room is 1010. <clears throat> and if you have any, 1010. And if you have any additional questions, ask Denise, but she's been there. Okay? Everybody get it? Yeah. It'd be great to have him. Get some, and if you wanted to call him, and there's no guarantee you'll get him, but because he's he's doing a lot of rehab. But if you want to call him, it's 717 832 2610. <clears throat> he's looking very good, very good. So and so was Lindsay. Saw Lindsay yesterday, and she's doing very well. She's doing very well. Uh, the fact that her boyfriend was there didn't hurt. <laughs> Are there any other announcements that need to be made? A sack of vegetables. Fest books. <laughs> Fest books. I was hoping for vegetables. Fest book. <coughs> Mark your calendars, July 13th. July 13th. It's a week later than what it normally would be. It's usually the Saturday following the 4th, but this time it's the second Saturday. We're having all kinds of unique things, such as a cornhole tournament by the Lions. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of games going to be. There's going to be lots of tosses this year. So, so remember the the, uh, s the second uh, Sunday. <clears throat> Anything else? New daily breads down there. The, the new daily breads are down there as well. Who else? Saturday. You said Sunday. Saturday. Did I say Sunday? <laughs> Second Saturday. Okay. I told you last week there's always someone to keep us humble. <laughs> Anything else? Take one another with the love of the Lord. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name.
she sing by herself? Not to baccalaureate. She did a solo at the graduation. At the graduation? <coughs> promotion. Oh, at the promotion. Yeah. She's now a high schooler. She, she also was highly honored as yes, the eighth grade girl. Yes, Anybody yes, else? She got the American Legion Citizenship Award yeah. on Friday. For the eighth grader, as an eighth grader. And he has a uh, distinguished honor roll and a math uh, certificate. Well, good. Yep. Math. Praise the Lord. Job, man. Anybody else? Yeah, my mother is going to. Uh, Enjoy her celebrating her 87th birthday on Tuesday. On Tuesday. <laughs> Let's do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matt. Happy If you're down at the hospital, you're allowed to run into Pat. She's all over that hospital down in Chambersburg. That's for sure. <laughs> so she does. Mary hasn't learned that ladies don't like their age. <laughs> no, no, no. Once you get to that point, sort of like Valentine's Day. Anybody else have something to share? Else? A couple weeks ago, we prayed for a friend of ours going through an audit. Mm -hmm. He got a refund. <laughs> uh, did you tell him that it was because of our prayers? I, we expect that type ten percent. I did tell him that we prayed for him. <laughs> I figured you would. Anybody else? I have a praise. Uh huh. You see Denise here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, most of you know that from the pulpit, I normally do not like to draw attention to people simply because some people feel uncomfortable about that. So that's the reason why I don't, but I'm going to make Tammy feel uncomfortable. <laughs> if you haven't met our new postal worker, there she is in the back. So you meet Tammy. So good to have you with us. She has been trying to get here for two months, I think, or better, had not so I've been, I, every time I see her, I say, well, is this the week? She told me yesterday, this is the week. Good to have you with us. Anybody else have anything to share? This is actually an announcement, should have been with the announcements, that two weeks from now is Wilson College book sale. If you haven't been in there, they have a lot of inspirational books, a lot of study Bibles, a lot of Bibles, a lot of... Um, um, Max Cato books and Joyce Myers and a lot of inspirational fiction to Okay. It's definitely okay. worth going. That's, that's a week from Saturday, next Saturday? Yeah. Yeah, a week. A week? Two weeks from yesterday? Two weeks, yeah. yeah. It's Friday and Saturday. Oh, Friday and Saturday. And it runs Sunday, too. Okay. If you've never read any, if you've never read any of Max Lucado's books, and you want to borrow it, I've got this many. Because he's my favorite writer. He is the C.S. Lewis of today's church. And he's powerful. In fact, I oftentimes will preach from some of his books. So, so if you get one of those, you'll be ahead of the game. But yeah, if you want to borrow one, I'll be glad to give it to you. But they're great purchase. Greatness gifts. Powerful stuff. Anybody else? I, I'm hoping that Max hears this on YouTube so he can give me some kickback. <laughs> yes. Um, I just have a prayer request. Um, it does no personal relation to me, but um, obviously I work in a hospital, and there's just a six-month-old baby that would probably use a lot of our prayers right now. So if we could just keep him in our prayers. 
Okay, a six month old. Okay. We'll do that per time. Anybody else have anything to share? Bill did a great motivational speech the other day at that graduation or promotion meeting for Bill um, Adams. He did a great job telling these kids you're from the valley, but that isn't going to stop him. Yeah. It hasn't stopped him. Yeah. Yeah. As he stood there with one arm, he said, Well, stop when my hand goes down. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else? Let us stand and sing. The Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> I lifted like I wasn't supposed to and I got it in not really in my back but I got it in the side here for some reason I'm kind of hoping that this is going to be the thing to finally help 
Yeah. And her name? Nicoli. First name? Nicoli. Anybody else? How many of you know that nothing's impossible with God? Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise this morning as we live. There are so many that need your touch. And we've, we've listed several even this morning. The six-month-old, the downtrodden, Wanda, Jeffrey, Susie, Chris, Nicholas. Father, we just ask that the power of your Holy Spirit would, be, would visit with them. Minister to them only as only you can. We thank you for the doctors and nurses who may be involved in some of their lives, but Father, we know you're still the answer. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Jesus demonstrated that while he was on this earth. He met every need, regardless of what that need was, Father, he met those needs. And they ranged from, from, from Father, from, from literally leprosy to, to bones that were not even grown yet. Eyes that hadn't seen. Father, we thank you that you've shown us in Jesus that nothing is impossible with you. You're Amen. still the creator. Yes, thank you. And you're still creating wonders and marvelous things, even in the lives of people who need a special touch of recreation. So, Father, we're just trusting you with them this morning. Should any of them not have a relationship with you, that today might be that day that they would call out on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm and receive Him into their heart and life. Thank you, Jesus. For our military personnel around this globe, Father, those especially that are in harm's way, Father, be their foreguard and their rear guard. Put that hedge of protection around them. And those that don't know You, Father, may this day be the day that they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. <laughs> Father, we just give You the thanks and we give You the praise in advance for all these because You've told us to do so. We pray for the leadership of this country that they too might come to the realization that Jesus is still the answer. That this nation, one nation under God, is what makes us invisible, indivisible. So Father, help them begin to quit looking at their own agendas and start focusing on what your agenda for this country might be. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem that Israel might come to know their Messiah yes. as the Lord and Savior, Jesus. Then, Father, then and only then will they find peace. And the Arabs, Father, and the Muslims in those areas, that they too would recognize that Jesus isn't a prophet. He's the Savior. Yes. Thank he's the Lord. Yes. And He's coming again. Yes. Father, we give you thanks and praise. All because of Jesus. And in His name we pray the prayer that He has taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For it is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us receive our tithes and offerings and your cards as your offering.
words of the doxology. Thanksgiving had been done, many Thanksgivings, but not in remembrance. And what are we supposed to remember on Memorial Day? What? That's not bad. She said the people who serve our country. But what more than that? Do you know? They don't teach stuff like at school anymore. And died for our country. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, and that's what we're remembering. But if we remember all that, and that, that is something we need to do. But the greatest person who ever gave his life for us was who? Jesus. Yeah. And that too is something we need to remember. Because that sets all men free everywhere. If they would just turn to him. So we remember not only those who have died for us, for this nation, though, but Jesus who died for everyone. Right? Pray with me. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Mm -hmm. We thank you for what he's done for us. And we give you the thanks and praise in his name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us stand and sing, America the Beautiful. <laughs>
a young lad was looking at a plaque inside the church doors, which as we have downstairs. Except this young plaque was honoring those who had given the supreme sacrifice in military service. The young lad just stared at it. Finally he turned and he said, Dad, says, what are all those names on that board for? And he said, Son, those are men and women who died in service. He looked around and he says, was that the first service or the second service? <laughs> Those of you who served in military, would you stand? Those of you who served in military, would you stand please? Thank you for your service. Remain standing. Those of you who have a family member currently in the service, would you stand? Those of you who have a good friend who is in the service, would you stand? Those of you who have lost a relative in the military, would you stand? Those of you who have a friend that was lost in the military, would you stand? It's important for us to recognize and realize that in many ways we've all been touched by those who have served and are serving, have given their all. Thank you for being received. In remembrance, in remembrance, it's so important for us. <clears throat> living in this country to remember. It's so important for many reasons. But I want us to draw our attention to the writings of Solomon in Ecclesiastes who talks about life, period. <clears throat> and we will see in a few moments about those who have died specifically. You may follow along in your bulletins if you went on your little insert. I have other scriptures that I'll be sharing, but you can at least follow a couple of them. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 1, the first verse says this, To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose under heaven. Stopping there for a moment. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time for every purpose. Sometimes we look at life and we don't recognize and realize that there is a time for what we're going through. There's a time for every purpose under heaven. If, as I shared with the graduates Thursday night, that their lives are, are very essential to what God has in mind. I shared with them two scriptures, one of which I shared last week. But from Psalm 139, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book all my days were fashioned for me, even when as yet there were none of them. As I shared last week that text and also then Thursday night, I share it again today because we need to understand God has a plan. Yep. God has a purpose for every one of us. Some who have served in the military, their purpose was to keep us safe. Their purpose for those who are serving now are to keep us safe. Many of them don't recognize that. But the reality is God has a plan for all of us. 
God has a purpose to everything there is a season. And I would honestly say to everyone there is a season. And to everyone there is a purpose under heaven. And as we gather in remembrance today, we need to recognize a couple of things. One of which is that everyone God has a purpose for and a plan for. Secondly, that includes you. Amen. Every one, for everyone, there is a season. You're here now because this is your season. You're here now because this is the time of your purpose. Our responsibility is to find that. Our responsibility is to make sure we don't miss it. So that we don't, as a friend of mine <clears throat> back in West Virginia, one of my parishioners looked at me on, on almost his deathbed. I hope you never say it. I never have to say it. I don't know why I'm here. What a waste of 90 some years. Not knowing why. Never be satisfied with not knowing. My friends, this is your season. This is your purpose. And the second scripture that I shared with them is from Jeremiah 29. My wife's favorite. She couldn't be here today since we're leaving here shortly for vacation. Just let you know. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good, not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. I know the plans I have for you. I know, and they're for your good. They're for your future. They're for your <coughs> hope. And so even as we are in remembrance of those who have gone before us and those who have died in the military service for us, we dare never, we dare never, listen to me carefully, never miss the reality that this is our time, this is our season, this is our purpose, this is what God has planned for us, and we dare not waste it. They died so that we could have a chance to do something with our lives. Don't miss your purpose. Don't miss God's plan for you. And then the writer Solomon goes on to say, a time to be born and a time to die. There is a time for each of us. Everyone, the Bible tells us very clearly that God has our days numbered. Our days are numbered. And if we're serving Him, we have X number of days. If we're not serving Him, we have X number of days. But God has a number for us. And one thing we dare never do is waste that number. Somebody once said, anything done for Christ is the only thing that's going to last. We can live our lives and do our thing, but Nothing's going to last except what we do for Jesus. Don't miss your time. Don't miss this moment. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted or to reap. Wouldn't it be strange if a farmer went out and planted his corn in the, in the field and the next day decided he needed to reap it and went out and dug a hole and started reaping all the corn that he had sowed? That wouldn't make any sense at all. To everything there is a season. And there's a time to plant and there's a time to reap. One of the things that we need to understand is that we might be in the planting season of our life. 
We might be in the reaping season. But one thing is so important is that we're doing one or the other. We're planting something. And we're reaping something. We always will reap what we sow. And the reality is, is that we must be very careful in what we sow. We must be very diligent in the time to reap it. There's a time to sow. There's a time to reap. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, a time to dance. A time to cast stones away and a time to gather them again. He lumps all these kind of in, a, in, in, a, in a one little grouping. A negative with a positive. A time to kill, a time to heal. Break down, build up, weep, laugh, mourn, dance. Isn't it interesting that in all of these concepts, Solomon in his wisdom, given from God, takes the reality that there are negatives in our lives, but he moves to the positive side. We dare not stay in the negatives. We dare not stay in the, in the difficult moments. We need to, as I shared a couple weeks ago, remember that the tunnel has an opening on the other's end. There is a light on the other side. And the, and the writer here is to, trying to help us understand that while these things do happen in our lives, the struggles, the difficulties, the hurts, there is the other side. Amen. And we dare never miss the other side. I know of several people who because of a variety of reasons became so depressed and they now have a medical term for it. But they become so depressed that they can't even leave their houses. Because somehow in some way Something happened within them that they began to look at the negatives all the time and no one ever gave them the positives. Maybe someone way back when told them they'd be no good and somehow that grasped their lives and they became worth nothing to anybody. Fraught with a fear of walking out the door. But Solomon in his wisdom said, these are the bad things, but these are the other things. These are the positive. These are the encouraging. These are the powerful things. There's both. And we're going to have to live with both. But I don't know about you. But I'd rather see a laugh than a cry. I'd rather see someone enjoying life than bemoaning it. And we all have that choice. Lest they who die died in vain. A time to cast away stones and gather stones to embrace and refrain from embracing, to gain, to lose, to keep, to throw away, to tear, to sow. Again, he lumps them into a group. Gathering, embracing, gaining, keeping. And isn't it interesting that in several of these situations he says the positive before the negative. Again, leaving the positive from the previous section and now going into some positives so that we understand Life is about the positives in the midst of the negatives. A time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. Jesus, in, in his walk through life, constantly was telling people, that even though a person has sinned, they can be forgiven. And too often in the life of the church, we have a difficulty separating the person from their, their sin. 
Our responsibility is to hate the sin, but love the sin. Hate what sin has done to them. If we begin to focus on the reality of what sin has done to the lives of people, and hate that sin, and hate the cause of that sin, and love that person. Remember, as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, the greatest of these gifts of all is what? Love. Love covers a multitude of sins as I've shared. Love is what breaks down a person going through this struggle. A time of war. And a time of peace. Our men and women who have gone to war have gone so that we might be in peace. Thank God for their willingness. Thank God for those who are willing to serve today. Thank God in remembrance. A time of war. So that we can have peace. You think I forgot one, didn't you? A time to keep silent, a time to speak. Oh, that our Congress would do more listening than talking. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, that we would spend more time hearing. It's a time to listen. There's a time to speak. One of the most important aspects of speaking is to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. To stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. The unborn. To speak out. To insist that somehow, somewhere, someone will hear. For many who are infirm. For many who are homeless. Destitute. Struggling. Somehow, someway, they've got to have a voice. There is a time to speak. There's a time to stand up as well as sit down. One of the biggest problems that I find even in the life of the church is we have a lot of people who like to talk. Obviously, I'm one of those. But the reality is, is that we can't just talk. We've got to oftentimes really hear what people are going through. There's a time. And that last passage there, Romans chapter 8, as many of you know, by far one of my favorite passages. For we know that in all things, all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to His purpose. All things working together, the times and the seasons, be they negative or positive, all of them, folk, we need to focus all of them together, work for our good. No matter what the enemy throws at us, all of them work together for our good. No matter what the struggle, no matter what the difficulty, all of those work together for our good. But we dare not just simply focus on the negative, but on the positive from Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time and there's a season. This is our time. This is our season. Thanks to a lot of men and women who haven't made it this far in their lives. Thanks to many in whom we remember today. But thanks for the greatest person that ever gave his life for us. And that's Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because He's made it all possible for this nation. He's made it all possible for you and me. For the real good that's still waiting for us. For the real light at the end of the tunnel called our lives. And our responsibility is to not simply remember those who have given their lives for us. But He who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us for the world, that we all might know peace. And His name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Pray with me.
Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you today for those who have gone on before us, those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, those who have made it possible for us to be here this morning in this free nation. We thank you, Father, for those who were willing and still are willing to serve and to surrender their lives for us. Father, we do indeed pray for that hedge of protection for them. Father, we pray that above everything else, we remember He who has done it all for us that we might have it all, Jesus. And Father, we just ask that as we leave this place today, that we leave this place in remembrance of those who have come and gone, but of He who still lives on, our Lord Jesus. And in His name, Amen. 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 Let us sing our concluding hymn, My Country, Tis of Thee.